Hi, Jason Ganahl, GQ Barbecue. Today I'm going to show you a very simple and easy way to make a mustard sauce that you can put on your grilled pork chops to take them to the next level. If you want to see how we do that, it's coming up right now. Here at GQ Barbecue, we are all about the grilling and chilling lifestyle. If that's something that interests you, smash down that subscription button, hit that bell notification, and you won't miss any of our videos. Pork is an excellent source of nutrients, and I've partnered with the National Pork Board on the video to show you how simple and easy cooking pork can be when done properly. Pork can take on a variety of flavor profiles depending on the seasoning or the marinades. Pork whole muscle cuts like loin roast, pork chops, and tenderloin should be cooked to an internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit, followed by a three minute rest to get the beautiful, tender texture. Click below for more pork grilling tips and recipe inspiration. We all know pork tastes great when you do it on the grill because you can infuse all those wonderful grill flavors that you can't do when cooking it in a pan or in the oven. Not only are we going to get that really good grilled taste into the pork, but I'm also going to show you a very simple mustard sauce. Today I'm going to be using the slow and sear to cook these beautiful pork chops on. We're going to get a fire going. I'm going to target a temperature somewhere around 275, 300 degrees to cook indirectly. And then we're going to sear them off over the direct heat to get that beautiful flavorful crust. So I got two beautiful bone-in pork chops. We're going to season these lightly with a coat of salt, and a coat of fresh ground black pepper. Okay. And then I'm gonna go lightly over the top with GQ Barbecue The Rub. I'll put a link down below in the description. I'm gonna put a strip of hickory wood right on top of the coals to impart some of that good hickory smoke flavor. So the pit has come up to temperature. We're running at 275 on the indirect side. So I'm gonna put the seasoned end of the pork chops down on the grill. And then I'm gonna re-season them with salt, pepper, and the rub. Some of you might be thinking, why are you adding rub when you've already added salt and pepper to it? What I like about adding just a really light coat of the rub here is because of the color it's going to get. Once that cooks into that slow and low, it's going to develop a really nice layer of flavor. And pork does an excellent job of taking on whatever flavors you put into it. So we're going to let these pork chops cook low and slow at about 275, 300 degrees, soaking up all that wonderful hickory smoke flavor until they reach an internal temperature of 135 degrees. Once they do, we're going to grill them off on the direct side to get that extra 10 degrees and create that beautiful, flavorful crust. So these chops have been cooking for about 30, 35 minutes. Let's see where we're at. Looking absolutely fantastic. We're coming in at about 114 degrees, which is exactly where I want to be. So we got another 20 degrees to go before we hit that 135 and we take them over here to the direct side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rotate these just 180 degrees so that they cook nice and even. We're going to let these go till they come up another 20 degrees and then we'll move them over here to get that beautiful crust going. So it's been about 10 minutes. Let's see where our chops are. Right at 134, which is perfect. 135 is that perfect temperature because we're going to gain another 10 degrees. We put them over here and cook them directly. We're cooking them directly to really develop that really flavorful, crispy crust because that's where all the flavor is. One thing I do want to show you guys is look at this fat right here. We got about a quarter inch of fat going around uh, the loin side of this chop over here. Once that hits the fire and crisps up, that's going to be one of the best bites on this entire chop. You got two different cuts. You got the bone that separates the loin from the tenderloin, but I would put a little bit of this fat up against any other bite on this chop. When grilling, I always like to use a good wet surface. So normally I like to take some oil, put it in a paper towel and brush it across. I don't have that today, so I'm using just some spray oil. Be very careful when using this. This is extremely flammable. Uh, but I've done it before, so I know what I'm doing, but don't, don't try this at home. This is gonna be a quick cook. We're just looking to do two things right here. We're trying to get an internal temperature up to 145 degrees, as well as develop a really nice crust on both sides. So I'm gonna be flipping them pretty regularly to ensure they don't burn. Look at that, doesn't that look good? This first one is probably about done, so I'm gonna pull it off to the cool side and see where we're at. 147, so I missed it by about two degrees, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it and let it rest for three minutes. 
The other chop, I'm gonna pull over to the cool side and see where we are. This guy's 146. Missed by one degree on that one, but it's done. So I'm gonna pull this guy off. We're gonna let both these chops rest. While they rest, I'm gonna make the sauce. So this is gonna be a Dijon sauce. It's gonna be very rich as a result of adding the Dijon mustard and the wine to it. This is a very basic, simple sauce to make. We're gonna chop up some shallots. Once you chop the shallot, you'll see this inside part, kind of similar to what you find in garlic. I like to remove those before I give it the fine mince. I also like to make sure I give it a really fine chop. I don't like big chunks of shallots in sauce. We're looking for about two ounces or a quarter cup of finely minced shallots. Next, I'm gonna chop the parsley. Thing to remember with this is the stems. You wanna make sure to get the stems out of there. All we really want is the, the leafy green part to go into the sauce. A little bit of stem isn't gonna be a problem, but I like to get the big pieces out if I can. Parsley is mostly gonna be for color. We'll go same on that, about two ounces. So for the ingredients for the sauce, we got a little bit of butter. We got about two ounces of shallots. We got about two ounces of the curly parsley. We got a tablespoon of the Dijon mustard. We've got about three quarters cup of chicken stock. We've got about a half cup of heavy cream. And we're gonna use a half a cup of white wine. Pinot Grigio works really well, but stay away from things like Riesling. You wanna go with a dry wine. When making the sauce, pan selection, believe it or not, is very important. Use a stainless steel stick pan. You wanna stay away from those non-stick pans. In my opinion, these make the best sauces. So we'll start out by adding a little bit of butter and some shallots. Just looking to sweat these down maybe two minutes or so till they get nice and soft and release their flavor. I'm gonna add in our wine. Let that come up to a boil. And I'm gonna add in our chicken stock, about three quarters of a cup. I'm gonna let that cook to reduces by about a third. Once that reduces by about one third, I'm gonna add in the cream. And then I'm gonna let that cook to this reduces down by about half. So our sauce is reduced by about half. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the heat over here on the cool side. I'm gonna to add to it about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And also the parsley flakes. And then whisk it gently to carefully incorporate all that wonderful Dijon flavor into the sauce. So one thing I always like to do with any sauce before I actually take it off the heat to serve is to taste it. This is important because then I can tell if I need to add anything to it, whether it's salt, pepper, in this case more mustard, whatever it might be. It's good. I like it. That would be good all by itself. Definitely get that Dijon flavor, which is what we're going for. Good, creamy, decadent, a little bit of depth in there. It's delicious. Now, if you were to cook the pork chops in the pan, you would get a lot more depth from that pork fat and from that pork cookie, but we wanted to get that grill flavor, so we did it on the grill. I am going to add some GQ barbecue rub to the sauce. When I say it goes great in everything, it really goes great in everything. So what I expect us to do is really wake everything up and give it that over-the-top flavor. See how it tastes. Perfect, just what I was hoping for. Cook pork chops for 145 degrees, then let them rest for three minutes, and you can cook pork awesome at your house every single time. If you like that video, go ahead and subscribe by clicking my face right there. Also, YouTube is gonna select for you the video they think you should watch next. Go ahead and click that box down below to see that, and I'll see you on the next one.